Okay, this is Gander Guide by the Gleeful Geese. Our project utilizes MIDAS, a depth estimation technology to identify nearby objects and assist users in avoiding collisions. The AI also processes objects in the environment, which allows it to warn the user. Our product is made for the average person as well as for the visually impaired, which offers a versatile solution that works on mobile phones and computers. So vision impairment is a serious problem. Approximately 2.2 billion people globally have some kind of vision impairment. And then billions more, while not vis visually impaired, are also find themselves distracted using their phones when walking. But cell phones aren't gonna go away. Rather, they're evolving with our app, Gander Guide. Our app has options for silent and immediate alerts, which notify users of anything that may block their way. Depth estimation models have been trained, but few real applications have been turned into consumer products. Gander Guide hopes to change this. So I'll give a quick overview of the website and then we'll launch into a demo. Firstly, before we start, I can give everybody a link to a demo version of the website where the app hasn't been mounted, but you can still see the front end framework and all the different UI elements. So I posted the link in the chat. Feel free to click that if you want to. The first. I think she might have cut out. Relax effect. There Especially, we go. <laughs> I want people to notice how the moon goes behind the goose. Secondly, there are different views that will be available in the final demo, but not in this current version. We have the human view, which is just our current video. We have the computer view, which will be object detection. And we have the Midas or the ghost view, which we use the Gaussian distribution filter on to help aid with our process. You'll also see these in the demo. Thirdly, the original website had 3.js using a Vite framework. However, when we tried to deploy it, we found that there were issues. So unfortunately, we were not able to include 3.js. And finally, the website uses audio alerts, not the current one here, but in our final production version, which we'll demo shortly, where we use text-to-speech using a, a model following our MIDAS and computer views combined. Yeah, this is what I mentioned by Flask. When you try to mount stuff online, gets really complicated really fast. But uh, Alex, if you want to show off your uh, version of the main site. Oops. Sorry. So I turned off my camera. I'm using an external webcam to show you what this actually looks like. I'm just navigating through my house. Turn slightly right. Good. And it's giving text-to-speech instructions through the website with the depth map. Object to the left. Turn right. Turn slightly right. Good. So a blind person would be able to use this to move around indoors or outdoors because we have different models that detect different types of objects. Bend to the right. Turn left. Object in the way, back up. And they would avoid bumping into things. Good. Yep, and this is also only one of three views. You want to show the other views? Yeah, this is the computer view, which includes object detection. This, this is, is using... my cat. <laughs> Cute cat. This is using the YOLO V8 model trained with the Coco data set. And we also have one that's trained using a furniture data set that we manually labeled with polygons. Feel free it's... to explore the website. So I will now hijack uh, the sharing if you want me to, Alex. Yeah. Because yeah. we still got more to show off. Yeah. All right. Take 
Okay, we use various tools to help us achieve our goals. We use RoboFlow to train our model, label and clean data, and we use PyTorch, OpenCV, and YOLO V8 for training as well. And for our video, we use Runway. The languages we use were Python, JavaScript, HTML, and CSS to develop our website, along with Flask. We also made a mobile app, which used Figma for UI and UX design, and Dart was our primary language. Using the Flutter SDK for easy app development. Finally, we used Midas, which measures relative distance to anything the camera sees. Using Midas, our model is not only able to detect ghosts, but also estimate the depth of objects in real time. Midas was trained off of PyTorch's neural network, which we use to detect objects in our model. And no, it is not King Midas, and it does not turn things into gold. We use SERP API to run collab notebooks that scraped images off of Google to collect over 1,500 images for our data set. After uploading these photos to RoboFlow, we annotated the images with concave polygons to ensure the model could accurately distinguish furniture from background or foreground objects. Then, for pre-processing, we applied several data augmentations to our images to increase the size of our data set and to train our model to compensate for variations that might arise in the mobile device cameras. For example, we augmented our data with rotations since people can turn their cameras either way, shear, and brightness adjustments because people live in different degrees of brightness. Especially considering blind people might not usually have the lights on, so we had to compensate for darker environments. Uh, and finally, we trained a furniture detection model based off of YOLO V8 in Google Colab using our data set from RoboFlow. And YOLO, by the way, stands for you only look once. So the idea is that it would the model is able to look at something for the first time and classify it, something that it hasn't seen before. Uh, our final model that had an MAP value, which stands for mean average precision with a threshold of 50% confidence of uh, 0.653. And it had a recall value of 0.627 and a precision value of 0.783. And these are like a ratio, so it's from zero to one. After being trained for 25 epochs or epochs. And in addition, we also trained a second model uh, on the COCO object detection data set, which is the one that you saw earlier in the computer view. Uh, and that one was, the idea was that we could use it for objects other than furniture for, for a much wider variety. So it has about 80 different classes in the data set, things like people, cars, a few different kinds of animals, chairs, even teddy bears is one of them. And COCO, by the way, stands for common objects in context. Uh, and then we, this set, this second model that we also developed had an uh, MAP 50 value of 0.757, a recall value of 0.664, and a precision value of 0.782 after being trained for 10 epics. And uh, the reason that it took less uh, epics that time was that the COCO data set was much larger than our previous data set. So the RoboFlow data set only had about 1,500 uh, images, which we enlarged to a few thousand after augmentations. But the COCO data set has hundreds of thousands of images with lots of annotations and labels. Uh, and then also using uh, frame processing, our model uh, checks for complete and partial obstructions to be identified and avoided. And then if none of them exist, it finds the most clear path of travel. So the user feedback, which you saw earlier in the uh, the ghost view or the Midas yeah. view, it's either verbal instructions with text to speech, or it's use uh, vibrations from the device that represent where the user should turn. So if the model sees a complete obstruction, it instructs the user to back up with either text to speech or a strong vibration. And if the model sees a partial obstruction, it makes the user aware of where the object is, and it tells them to turn in the other direction. And it can also use vibrations to guide the user in a particular direction. One of the other techniques we researched was estimating the point that the user is approaching in 3D space. Since we only have one lens, we did this by tracking the corners of the frame using OpenCV's optical flow between frames. Because the corners stayed in the same places in 3D over time, we could extrapolate their movement, which is denoted by rays in that picture. And then we used the intersections of all of those rays and a clustering algorithm called dbscan to find the centroid of the most common cluster of those ray intersections. 
this is a really good tool for approximating the point the user is approaching. But in our testing, it was too erratic and it was not robust enough to be implemented fully. So we wanted to create an app for our project. So we used Figma to create the UI slash UX. However, the plugins that we used to turn the Dart or turn the Figma app into Dart code did not work. So we had to learn Dart and how it works with Flutter to replicate the app we made from Figma. The good thing about Flutter is that Flutter uses ahead of time or AOT compilation for iOS and uh, just in time or JIT compi compilation for Android which AOT and JRET are used to turn Dart code into native machine code, making the Gander Guide app accessible by most mobile devices. So if you can see my phone right now, I've got the app loaded up. We can swap to the camera or about us. And if I hit start taking pictures, it'll start periodically taking images and sending it to our API that we've hosted in the back end and then displaying the results on screen. So I didn't actually hit start taking pictures yet, but you'll hear it starts going. I'll silence it. But as we get the responses back, uh, it is outputting what the vibrations are and giving us a heat map of everything that's around. So we have it fully working. The API is mounted online. Um, it's it's pretty awesome. I'm not going to lie. Like I can feel my hand buzzing in my, or I can feel my hand buzzing uh, and it buzzes differently based on where I'm looking. You can even see the different parameters getting printed. Uh, so yeah, I had to show that off. So when we first, sorry, my bad. When we first started with bounding boxes when in training our model, um, our model could not identify furniture accurately enough. In order to fix this, we replaced much of the bounding boxes with of our of over eight fifteen hundred images with polygons for much greater accuracy. We also gather images images of furniture that were unrealistic to have in normal households and fancy and expensive, which did not represent the majority of our households in the world. To solve this, we gathered more images to normalize our data set to provide the most accurate results to the user. And our model has more latency with, while identifying objects. This was a problem because we couldn't identify fast enough and someone may walk into an object before uh, the computer notifies them. It was much slower when we used RoboFlow's API key to host our model, which led to us training our model with YOLO V8 locally instead, boosting frames per second and the speed at which our model processes each object in a room. So we faced quite a bit of issues with deployment. Firstly, the website deployment involved a lot of messing around with the requirement files and our initial plan to deploy it to Vercel didn't end up. So we decided to deploy it to Python anywhere. This is because uploading a Flask app to a, a front end deployment site, especially one that's supposed to be serverless like Vercel comes with a lot of issues. Because when we want to mount our website, not only do we have a front end, but we also need our Flask back end. And we can't have a static website because of our API. So we had to use, and Travis will explain this a bit more later, but we have to use tunneling to actually get our API up for the app. And you can see the website currently isn't completely mounted. Finally, we also had problems consolidating inputs with our environments. And since nobody was familiar with Flutter, Writing and writing to apps is much different than writing code for a website. A lot of people had to get used to creating the app, learning a different language, and Flutter also itself took a long time to set up. I'm pretty sure it took around four hours per person and each person had to set it up. Yeah, so what could we have done with more time? These are probably the three coolest things. Um, and the biggest one was, uh, more outdoor showcase of it. Uh, we wanted to integrate Coco a bit better and have a more direct toggle we can do. Right now it's a little more backend heavy. And the last thing we wanted to do was ideally integrate some sort of Siri functionality. Some idea of, hey, you know, 
uh, is there a couch in front of me? And being able to get some call and response and have memory, but obviously time constraints, we could not accomplish that. Uh, so we had some advanced ghost detection. We were able, uh, ideally we want to scale up and get uh, to detect some alien spacecraft. NASA can hit us up whenever. We want to add some more household objects. I think we could improve the uh, level of complexity some of our data classes had. We only ended up with, I think, eight, uh, which led to some complicated classifiers. Uh, fine tuning the ray tracking algorithm, making the app faster. As of now, there are some minor latency issues just because you're taking an image, sending it to a server uh, that is uh, basically hosted through Python, which is inherently slow, and then trying to get it back. And then the last thing we want to do is add background fetch. We mentioned, I'm, I'm sure everyone's been distracted looking at their phone and almost walked into a wall, a pole, a tree, something like that. Uh, we the next step would really be adding background fetch. So this could run in the background and vibrate in your hand to let you know you're about to walk into something. And that's really uh, the final culmination. So uh, to wrap everything up, um, I'm going to show off the video that uh, we put together. Hopefully I'm sharing audio. I don't know if I'm sharing audio or not. I don't think you are. I don't think I am either. I'm sharing audio now. Introducing Gander Guide, your handheld computer vision companion, our project is an epoch of AI history. Powered by state-of-the-art depth estimation models, Gander Guide is a first-of-its-kind application that focuses on finding the closest objects to the user, ensuring safe passage through whatever treacherous obstacles are in their way. With just a single lens camera, users can capture and process depth maps on the go, providing them with a comprehensive understanding and warnings of their surroundings. Gander Guide will revolutionize millions of lives, helping them get through the day lickety split. Download Gander Guide today, and together we can redefine what it means to see. Yeah, so that's uh, that's it. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Uh, I had such a blast working on this with everybody. Uh, yeah, I mean, I got to brag. We've done. So, I've learned so much thanks to everybody. It's been amazing. <laughs>